So we're, we're going to build Javier's deck and then change the things I don't like about it that I think can be fixed. And it should work out, I think. So, you know, is what it is. Yo, what's up? Is the Tim? Oh, that sucks. Well, you know, sometimes that happens. Happens to the best. Happens to the worst. Happens to the mediums. You know. Titan. Um. Uro Titan. I haven't played with Uro in Legacy in a while, but... This obviously... It makes sense to play it here. You know. Uro. Titan of Natures. Is the filter broken? Arrow Titan. Okay, I don't know what was uh, not that one. One, two, three. What's up, Eli? We're gonna try fixing Javier's deck. Hopefully, uh, some people will be happy that I'm back to Legacy for a bit. I think I'm actually gonna go, um, go over the top eight decks I would pick for Vintage in a YouTube video at some point as well. So be on the lookout for that if you're looking to play Eternal Weekend. Sweet shop. Are you going to play Vintage? Or are you not about that? Why are there so many printings of Plow? Just playing Legacy? Fair enough. Plow, four pending. There are two dazes, but I think I'm gonna end up cutting one, but we'll leave it for now at first, and then slowly take out what I don't like about the deck. Terminus. Retro Fitter Foundry. Then I will die sooner than see you gone. I'm gonna go down swinging. Here's our you haven't played vintage until s since Psychic Dog was good? That's a long time ago. I remember when it was fine, but that's basically been years for me. You know. Fair enough. Uh, Alright, so what else is in this deck? Yeah, I got distracted by a second. Two, alright, four exploration and one Sylvan Library. I like the Sylvan Library. I think I might actually add more of that card in this shell. I think Sylvan Library plus exploration plus Uro is just, they go together so well. It's kind of crazy how well they go together. Yo, Regis Jr., welcome back. Thank you for the sub. Can can y'all be as cool as Regis Jr. and get the hype train going? Yo, what's up, Tristel? How you been? It's been a while. Hope you're having a good one. Really hope you're having a good one, actually. Oh, you left the starter right there and it died? That sucks. Alright, um, actually I'm not even going to bother building his old mana base because I know I want to change it. Suffice it to say is Pluto Deltas and Scalding Tarns, and I want to play Missy Rainforest and Flood Strand so I can play Savannah. Like, it, there's just... There's no getting around that, personally. I will play 4 Chop, 1 Tundra, though. Which is what he had. I think I'm going to play exactly one basic forest as well. I'm not sure. Like, I might talk myself out of it. Maracus is good. He has a Mystic Sanctuary, which I think is kind of good, but I might end up cutting it. I'm not the biggest fan of that card, like other people are. But, you know. 
see how I feel. Man, this this soundtrack is just full of bangers. All right. Um, what lands are missing? He has he has ten fetches. I'm not sure you actually need ten fetches. Berserk. Yeah, Berserk plus Psychotog was a combo back then. It's kind of funny because I think that's aged not great, but you know. Yeah, I think I think it's really funny that Psychotog used to play Berserk, but it doesn't anymore. It also used to play like two Cunning Wish and like a Shadow Rift and a and a Berserk and like you could you used to be able to wish for your eight Ks that you exiled with Psychotog and stuff like that. Obviously, none of that happens anymore. Yeah, Shadow Rift is a nice one with Tog. It's just like plus one point five power. What land am I missing? I think I'll just put a one swept teeth for now and then decide if that's actually correct. I might change my mind. Here, uh, well, I'm, I'm making a bunch of changes because he said he didn't think his sideboard was very good. I, I'm inclined to agree, actually, but it's possible the changes I make just make the combo matchup bad. But I kind of think your combo matchup is not going to be as good as you would like it to be anyways. Because you're scooping a lot of game ones in the matchup. But we'll see what happens. I could be wrong, obviously. I'm always open to being wrong. Fast bond and gush? Oh, maybe fast bond plus gush is just better than uh AKing a bunch, I suppose. That makes sense. It actually makes a lot of sense. You have a bunch of old text files saved then. You don't um you don't have them. Or you're not sure if you have them. So back lantern is a slam dunk. I kind of like Pithic Needle in these decks. But he doesn't have one currently. That could change, obviously. Spell Pierce. What am I missing? Three search for fraction and a Bluster Storm. Bluster Storm is really expensive on MTGO now. Mostly because it's good and modern now. So, Buster Storm. All right, so let's uh, go over a few things here. The basic genesis of the deck, I think, how Javier got to it was like, well, what if you play Loam plus Uro, but you don't want to play the full land shell? And you can play the good white removal. So you're basically a blue-green deck splashing Plow, Terminus, and Prismatic Ending, which isn't terrible. Like, those are pretty strong cards. Um, and I think this actually does fix some of the weaknesses of the land's archetype that can happen. Like, they have to both Surgical, your Loam, and Uro if you play against uh, Control decks or something like that. And you do also don't have the vulnerability to opposing Caracas that ordinary bant might you know because there's definitely this issue in normal bant that if you rely on just uro to um win the game with you can get into situations where just a caracas locks you out and you draw a bunch of cards but none of your cards are all of your cards are just a removal and uro and then it's like actually hard to like end a game without a planeswalker or something like that so the issue being here you can just wasteland 
the Krakis, or you can just go to Urza Saga and make a bunch of constructs. There's a lot of ways to do it, you know? And in this deck in particular, you can actually go really, really, really long. So you're playing against a creature deck, you can just Terminus the board away, Sanctuary the Terminus back, then go to town with uh, Urza Saga constructs. I'm generally pretty anti-Sanctuary, but the more and more I look at the deck, I think maybe here it makes sense, more so than any other deck I've seen in Legacy, because you actually have a really high land count. Oh, like I'm going to get to that. I think his sideboard is not good, and he also said he thought his sideboard was not good. I think basically this sideboard is a very 2015 sideboard, not a not a 2021 sideboard, is how I'll put it. There's not enough uh, busted green cards in the sideboard, or hate bears, in my opinion, so we'll fix that in a second. So yeah, uh, I kind of want to play one basic forest. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe I should play a basic island. Yeah, this is a boomer sideboard. Uh, nope, exactly. That's the other card I would want to play at least one copy of. You don't have to play a lot. Like, the cantrips and the Sylvan Library mean you see a lot of cards. Maybe you only have to play, like, one or two. Yo, Tonic Booth, welcome back. Um, can we get some more subs like Tonic Booth? We're at two subs today. I'll open chests in a second for people. And yeah, I think Meddling Mage makes sense, which is one of the cards I was actually going to mention. I'm basically going to shave down on all of these pitch counters because I think there's just way too many of those. In fact, I would probably prefer not to play any of those, to be quite fair. I'm just going to put in like a bunch of random like hate bears that are relatively good instead. Because I think that is the approach that a deck like this wants to take more than anything else. Um... I'm just looking for the good ones. AKA the ones that people complain about when people played. Oh, uh, what about less than four Loam? I could see playing exactly three, but Loam, Loam does a lot in this deck to like, to really love though. So I don't know, might actually just keep the four. Loam is pretty broken with Brainstorm. Like this is not a combination that people play with a lot, but just Loaming back a bunch of lands and Brainstorming them back is actually just Ancestral Recall. Like, so th th there's actually a lot to like about playing Four Loams, even though you typically don't see it very often. I used to play Bug Land still a long time ago, and Loam plus Brainstorm was just so, so, so good in that deck. Like, it's it's kind of hard to explain how good Loam plus Brainstorm is. Like, The rest of the deck might not be that good, but I'm fairly certain that that's one of the more appealing parts of the deck in my uh, in my regard, or my purview, rather. All right, I'm gonna play two Fluster Storm because I like having these versus like Sneak and Show. It's also nice to like protect one of your hate permanents versus like Counter Magic with one of these uh, one man counters. And then I'm gonna cut a Daze for a Mox Diamond, which sounds weird, but I think you. It, it, I think you want the first Mox Diamond in a deck like this, because Saga sets you back mana when it dies, and Mox put, works well with Loam. The first Mox is not too costly. Uh, Veil of Summer, Pointless. Yeah, it's. I don't really like it in decks like these. I think you want your like sideboard slots to be more hammery and less like Cryptic Commandy, if that makes sense. Like at its core, Veil is obviously a really powerful Cryptic Command. I don't think this deck needs cryptic fans. I think you need like I think you need hammers more than anything else. I don't really see the point of playing all these surgicals when I could just play endurance instead. Like, I think endurance is really, really, really messed up magic card. Like, extraordinarily messed up magic card. <laughs> and so is Force of Vigor. So I want to play two endurance. One Force of Vigor, at least. Just because of power level considerations. Like, I think it's kind of weird to not play the more powerful 2021 cards. And, you know, I, I don't blame Javier for that. I think you just have to readjust your mindset, you know? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. I might cut the second Retrofitter Foundry. Like, 
The first copy is really good. I don't really think you ever need to, really. Like, there, obviously, if your first one gets pendinged or something, you would want the second. Uh, prismatic ending, that is. But I think, generally speaking, it's it's really not necessary to play two of that card. Um, Were there any other thoughts I had? Oh yeah, basic land. Should I play a basic island or an such or a basic forest? I kind of want to, but at the same time, your mana is really stretched. There's also stuff you could do with like crop rotation, Bujuka Bog in the sideboard. Like you could have a small crop rotation package, and that might actually be worth it. But it's kind of hard to tell. Like I could very easily see cutting surgical and like the carpet and playing like. Two crop rotation, a bajuka bog, and a tabernacle. Um, Canadis is also a consideration, actually, now that I think about it. So yeah, those are the those are the major thoughts I have with regards to build. Like a lot of a lot of questions to answer, and it's there's, it's not necessarily, like, I'm not sure I can answer them all immediately, you know? Collector Oof. Uh, I don't love it, really. I have a Mox Diamond, two Foundry, and maybe Soul Guide Lantern. Obviously, that's not, like, a huge deal. I think I would rather play more Force of Vigors than Collector Oof, generally speaking. But, uh, again... You know, kind of hard to figure out what's actually correct there, you know. So, I'm still thinking about these considerations. I might just end up playing a third meddling mage. Two targets? Uh, there are three. Getting the mox matters a lot, actually, Crystal, like I explained. You you don't need to play, like, five plus targets. Like, in modern, people do that mostly because, like, you don't have Brainstorm. Why do you want Hate Bears? Because, um, well, there are two foundries, currently. So there's actually three, but, uh, whatever. Well, what I'm saying is that you want hate bears over pitch counters because I kind of think your blue count is just strained heavily. Like, obviously we have 12 blue cards in the main and you can side in six forces, but I don't even think that's good, like, on average. I think that what you're going to just... What's going to happen with a lot of those hands is you're going to be like, all right, I got my Ponder, Brainstorm, and Foul... I have to foul their thing instead of playing a meddling mage on two. And then, like, I don't play a functional game versus, like, a Veil of Summer or something like that anyways. Whereas, like, a Hate Bear might just, like, allow you to apply pressure and lock out the necessary pieces. I'm explaining why I don't really like pitch counters either in the main deck or the sideboard, Pedro. I mean, you can play them. I wouldn't fault you. I just, that's not the approach I personally want to take. You know. Um, I also am suspicious of this carpet of flowers. So I think I'm going to end up cutting it for another, like, either Endurance, Force of Vigor, or another Meddling Mage. Also, I think Javier has Hydro Blast because Blood Moon's really good versus stacks, so... I'm not cutting that card. Um, if if y'all are wondering.
just top deck the one Mox and blast the moon. Uh, that's not a very reliable plan. That's also why I'm thinking about playing exactly one basic island. I might cut the fourth trop, actually. I think I am going to play one basic island. Oh, can I rant about these? These these are horrible. Like, I hate these lands so much. But I guess that's my rant. They look like I they look like faceless swamps to me. I don't know. Yeah, I, d I don't like swamps, in fact. I you are right, I do not like swamps. No, I don't. I really don't. They're just like come on. Like, seriously? Do they look better IRL? Can someone tell me if they look better IRL? If they look better IRL, I'm willing to give them a pass, I I guess. But... They're better IRL? Okay. It's just the digital implementation of them, they do not really look very good to me. I'm not gonna lie, like... Alright, um, they have the same problem, but are better IRL. Tristel, is this IRL? Um, yeah, I want Heath because it can fetch Savannah. Sorry, uh, have you been playing limited IRL? Or is this arena thing, Tristel? Kind of curious. Obviously, this is a bit of a divergence, but, you know. Alright, I'm still deciding on my last sideboard slot. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't played an IRL draft for either Crimson Vow or the other one. So, like, you know, I'll just believe you. I suppose. We'll play week. Yeah, I will in a sec. I'm just deciding what the last card should be in the sideboard, then I have to rent the deck from card order. I have I have not played like an RL draft or limited tournament for forever. You know. Yo, worse for where? Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. If you all want to support this stream, like, worse for wear, and you have a Twitch Prime sub, uh, I would appreciate if you used it here. Obviously not obligated, but definitely appreciate it. Uh, we have three chests on the stack, by the way. And, uh, my subs can show, show off the awesome emotes. I'm thinking about a second library, actually. I think I might keep the one days, but, because of the Sanctuary, but that might be crazy. You know? I'm also actually maniacally thinking about um, playing a second Sylvan Library over the second Retrofitter Foundry. I also am thinking about cutting the second Foundry for a second Mox Diamond. So, alright. You know what I'm going to do? I might do something like this. I think I'm going to play the second Diamond Main, and I'm going to sideboard the second Sylvan Library. Just to have more gas versus, like, opposing grind decks as well. I'm not sure... There's a lot of situations where you don't have time to cast the second Library versus a blue-red deck anyways. So, I kind of don't hate doing it this way. What am I sideboarding versus blue-red? Probably the Flusters and Hydros and Endurances... Probably siding. Well, if they show me uh, Saga, I would side in the Fog too, but 
B6 and probably citing out like D's, the library. Yeah, I think this is a neat idea, Fine Gersh. That's why I'm trying it. Yeah, this was from um, Javier. So, yeah. We're going to go with this configuration. Obviously, I don't know if it's good or not. I feel like it's fine, but obviously, I could be off the mark. I'm always open to that possibility, you know? Wait. Uh, I got confused for a second because apparently I had a different loan out that I forgot to return. But it should be fine. I don't think this is too much. Yeah, this is not breaking my bank. Love a good band bullshit. Yeah. You band bullshitted me pretty good last weekend, not gonna lie. Or, well, is the Tim, keep in mind that exploration, or a brainstorm, ponder, and Sylvan Library go a long way. So don't forget that part, right? Like, you, all, all of those numbers are magnified because of the cantrips, right? That's just kind of how the blue decks operate, you know? Like, this is closer to like a 32 land deck if I had to put a number to it, you know? Is the God account already up? It is. I don't use that. I'm not going to play Eternal Weekend because I'm busy, unfortunately. But it's up for other people, I believe. I'm just building this deck and using card order still. I'm just just trying to fix some of the problems I perceive with the deck. Obviously, I, like, like I said, I could be wrong. You know, I'm willing to admit that... I don't know everything, but I have a good feeling of what should work, I feel like. Uh, can someone tell me if the Cardboard Lab is updated with the deck list? Well, basically, like, two cantrips is about one land. Obviously, that's, like, a made-up-ish number, but, you know. Jarvis, going to Vegas? Yo, Paris Lane, I... You know, if they'd given me another month of lead time, I would have gone, personally, and I would have loved to hang out with you and the pals, but I can't this time. Um, especially since I'm driving family to Thanksgiving the week after. You know, is what it is. I'll try to make it out to the next one. I think CFB will be happy to run so many of these, in my opinion. Like, it's... It, it obviously sucks. Like, I would love to see people, but, you know, I'm not going to uh, let it destroy me, you know? Oh, you'll miss me? I love to hear it. Well, I hope you're not sad, but I do love to hear it. Ooh, four subs so far. All right. And the deck is here? We're just running hot today. Okay. Was really thinking about playing Tabernacle and Crop Rotation in the sideboard. Just for you, Celine. Just for you. Tabernacle and Pendulum Veil. A very powerful magic card. That. I have a second one lying around, just in case if you need to play uh, Vintage Stacks. That Tabernacle Life. Yeah, I bought a second one during COVID and it went up, so I obviously feel like a genius. Alright, uh, I have, to, I have to open four chests real quick, then we'll get to some league matches. Right. Here's one for the first sub of the day. <laughs> Dreadhorn or Kenneth, really? Hmm. Uh, well, this one's banned in Legacy.
35 play points is decent. That's above expectation. All right, number two. Let's see what we got. Magister Sphinx, straight from, uh, yeah, Conflux. This is a cool card. It's either a burn spell or a white gain spell. And 10 play points. Is DHA better or worse than Monkey? I'm pretty sure it's a better card, but whatever. That's like an irrelevant discussion. Alright, number three. Avatar of Might. Thunderbust. And five play points. This is not even the good av Avatar of Might. It's like from Prophecy, I think, originally. But this is like the lame one. This is a 10th edition one. It is RK Post, though, so... Tooth and Nail for Mag Magister Sphinx and Hellcate Overlord. So weird. All right, number four. What we got? Ooh, four Chitter's Bitter, which would be something I wrote. An Aurelia Exemplar of Justice, which is nothing here. Five play points. So uh, not a not a great set of chess. And if you want to be as cool as those people who sub with cool emotes like these. Consider subbing to the channel as well. With Twitch Prime sub or regular sub, you know. All all are appreciated. Alright, let's go to the league and give this a spin. <laughs> wow, Fair Celine just uh crushing those emotes, huh? We got a match playing against Wind Dragon 1. I haven't played Legacy for a while, but it's like riding a bike, right? That's what I've heard. So remember, I have a Savannah in my deck, and this is it's for situations like these. I think this is pretty clearly a keep. Yo, what's up, Emil? Midlin. I'm going to be playing a little bit more Legacy and Vintage in the few upcoming weeks. I've been on a Modern kick. I think Modern is really good right now, actually. That's going to five. Probably some like D-Gen combo deck, if that's the case. That's my suspicion, anyways. Uh, when Modern, so Lackey, when Modern first came out, people actually loved it a lot, to be fair. And that Modern format was really broken, actually. So, I mean, Ross and I played in a tournament at that, uh, at that event, and Ross beat me. What's up, Ross? I figured I would give you, uh, the fair, the fair shoutouts. Post was legal in that modern format. It was, but all of the turn four combo decks had Ponder and Preordain, Janky, so you would just combo kill Post on turn four every game. Oh, so it's, it's Nick Pit. <laughs> Rust did beat me very easily, and I was very salty about it. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty salty. I'm just plowing that explore every time. I'm not letting them get their mana ramp. Also, I've drawn my only basic. Ah, fuck. How do they always have it? How do they always have it, chat? And I've also drawn my only basic. And I don't have stage depths in my deck. Also, naming brainstorms nonsense because I would just brainstorm a response to the therapy. I mean, they only have one card, but they get a double rampant growth, right? So. Also, I'm not dazing. They should probably therapy exploration, to be quite fair. What? Excuse me? Oh, it's just John. Never mind. 
excuse me? Excuse? They therapied Uro? That's uh, something I suppose you can do, what I would not do personally. Why do they therapy Uro? That is very peculiar. I don't think they have field in their deck, I think they're just Jund. Okay, so I'm going to probably put back Waste. It doesn't look very good. And I'm probably going to put back the second Exploration. It also doesn't look very good. So I think what it, chat, what I think I want to do next turn is just flashback the Arrow. So I don't even want to play Saga this turn because if I play Saga this turn, I'll just have to, um give up activating for a Construct, so I should just Uro next turn and play this. N yeah, maybe, but I don't know. I think I can very easily beat Field of the Dead if it comes to that. Like, Urza's Saga kind of drowns Field of the Dead, straight up. Yeah, I'm just going to play this. Remember when they therapied my Uro? That was just like mind boggling. Alright, so I have no good targets for Loam, but that's fine. Why did they therapy Uro? Like, you should just therapy exploration, I think. It was so confusing. Fine. All right, my four card opponent cannot beat Uro probably, is my guess. Uro's so good, got to get it out of there. I don't think that's the way you want to do it, um, shop. I don't think that's the way you want to do that. Taiga, do they have like sneak attack in their deck? What if they just have sneak attack? Therapy? Yeah. Resolved. Yeah, probably not, Shop. You're probably correct there. Our opponent probably did not come here to be the spikiest spike. There are no Jaces in my deck. <laughs> That's kind of funny, though. By the way, how's the music volume? Is it fine? Uh, trophy, sure. I don't have any more basics, sadly, but it's okay, they have no cards in hand. Felidar Retreat? Uh, I played Fel- I- Gersh- Gershi, funny you bring that up. I have played, uh, that card in this type of deck before. I'm gonna sandbag one of these for Brainstorm, but not the other one. And the other reason to sandbag it is, like, Pernicious Steed. Nah, no one mentioned it, but I think you only want to play Felidar Retreat if there are, like, a lot of Bant Mirrors, essentially. Right. So I'm going to get Foundry here, because, like, the other card doesn't do anything. Uh, Felidar Retreat. Not Retreat to Amiria. Um, giving them two lands is bad if they top deck like some haymaker. I can't even think of what. So I think I'm, I'm actually going to plow it, because this is like 
If they get two more basics in top deck like Zenith and then like a six drop, it could end four away from me, you know? And I have a pretty quick clock as it is, so. Well, no, so if if I attack into that, give them two lands and they top deck a six drop, how do I daze it? It doesn't work, right? Breeder Gargadon? I haven't seen one of those in a while. Pretty funny. Looking for a Loam or a Sylvan. Uh, is Waste good? Kind of, yeah. I think drawing the Waste is good, and then casting Bonder next turn is also good. But what if it's just, like, Grave Titan? Wacky. Like, I don't see the upside of letting them block. You know, like, this is Nick Fit. They could have all sorts of nonsensical six drops in their deck. What if they top deck Primeval Titan with seven lands out? You know? I think basically giving them a free double rampant growth is one of the ways I can lose, you know? Like, I'm just, like, I'm so far ahead, I'm trying to imagine what a winning game for them looks like. It definitely involves blocking with better and exploring and getting two more lands. Oh, you are? I don't know. This day seems, like, not very good to me here, honestly. But my opponent's also super dead. I don't know why they therapied her out. That was so mind-boggling. Priest for Zenith, Cutting Days. Uh, I also think Retrofitter and Moxheim are actually not that good versus my opponent. But I'm going to leave... I'm going to side in a Soul Guide over the second Mox. The reason I'm going to cut a Mox is Pernacious Steed. Like, there's enough ramp style stuff in this deck that I think it's okay. Um, not cutting these white cards. Do I want... Endurance for the second Sylvan. I probably want the second Sylvan. And probably cut, like... Actually, maybe I don't want the Priest. That's what I'm thinking about. Also, I'm going to try to avoid fetching Island, because they showed me Trophy and Veteran Explorer, so if you fetch the Island, you just give a, a free, free card relatively often. I'm going to cut the Priest, actually. I don't know about Terminus. Seems kind of not great, honestly. I'm going to cut Terminus. I think, I'm pretty sure it's just bad in this matchup. So, what's the last card I want to put in? Probably, like... Alright. I've actually... So I have Mystic Sanctuary in my deck, so you should fetch Islands if possible. Uh, the one counterpoint is Choke, maybe, but... 
They played this deck versus you? Hydra for Moon or Snake. I don't know that they had those cards for sure. Otherwise, I would do it. If I knew for sure that they had those cards, I probably would side in this card. But blind, I'm not going to do it, is the Tim. Oh, ending on Dry Driver? Uh, I mean, to be fair, like, that's a pretty easy mistake to make, right? The Garg is back. I don't want to play this this turn because next turn I'm going to end up playing Uro instead, I think. That's just valuable for Brainstorm, so I'll play Trop instead. I don't know, like, people just do whatever they want, right? Like, it's so hard to know what's actually going on. I see. I'm probably just going to, um, actually, I need to plow it. I need to plow it because I want to spend this turn playing Saga into Uro, into Fetch, probably. Oh, we could, actually. Voidwalker was their, like, um, way to deal with Uro as well, so it works out really well. Oh, nice. I just get everything. So I can play Exploration off Savannah. And just waste them. Got him. I think I'm just gonna cast Uro instead. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's a. Hmm. kind of close actually so the reason not to play Uro is you think the game's going to come down to cards but I guess Uro just feeds itself more cards anyways so I should probably just do it and give up one construct like is the construct really better than a card probably not Uh, if I play the fetch first, I can exile a fetch instead of waste. That might be relevant, actually. Or I can Sanctuary plow on top. To give myself coverage. One, two... No, I can't. Alright. I can't actually do that, so... Well, I could do it, but it would actually involve me exiling the, uh, I want to leave a plow. Actually, maybe I did, but I don't know if I need it yet, is what I'm actually thinking. So, I'm going to leave the plow in the graveyard and exile everything else. Yeah, that's true. That's a better framing, but, you know. Oh, sick. So, obviously a deed, like, obliterates me, but that's fine. Well, now I don't even have to give up the construct. I forgot that that was possible, you know. I could just find the construct, or find a land anyways, and just get everything. This game looking a, bit, a little bit unfair? Yeah, I kind of wonder if Javier just broke it. Like, you know, that's kind of the nice thing about having unique perspectives on things. Uh, Gargadon wasn't legal in War 1 block. Or, uh, sorry. Time Tomorrow block standard, it was legal, for sure. But, and I guess there was some overlap with War 1, so correction. You are correct. I thought you said block constructed. Yeah, no, no, I, I retracted myself. 
seven duels. Uh, you can probably get away with less than three drops. You can probably play two drops, two savannas, two tundras, honestly. Why did it name Uro again? By the way, so they're gonna get to cack my saga, but there's, like, I guess they can get Sword Lantern, which is like vaguely annoying. But I think I'm just gonna make a bunch of constructs. So you can get Box Diamond, Soul Guide Lantern, or the Foundry. Does it show me what they got? I guess it doesn't. Does it not show me what they got? Oh, they got the Foundry. Okay. So they did get Foundry. I guess I should just attack first in case they block. If they block, that's fine. And I can waste them, and it's probably fine. I was trying to figure out if there was any reason to ending that first, and I don't think there really is. By the way, uh, the Gargon's on six, so they could sack their entire board and end up with... end up with one counter on their guard, and I would still be at 26, so it really seems not worth it for them. So, how dangerous is it to let them have that? So, if they top deck Pernicious Deed and have a land in hand, they can play Deed for two. That's really not even good enough. So, I think I'm just going to do this. And they're kind of dead next turn. Like, I make Construct. I make another Construct. They can search up, like, some bad card from my deck. And, like, it doesn't really work for them, right? All right. Always, always make constructs. Always make constructs, chat. We are construct gamers here. It's been a while since I've Sylvan, but... It's okay, whatever. You know, I have basically in... Waste our own saga? No, I've wasted my own saga once, and it was really bad. Why would I waste my own saga? They got Soul Guide Lantern, by the way. Um, ending that. Paint, blue, white. They only have two blockers, so... Oh, I guess they can make Varg as a blocker? Do I care? Not really. Or you can make a Gargadon, and then you'll lose next turn. I don't think it really matters that they get a Soul Guide Lantern into their hand. Or their effective hand, I guess, essentially. Uh, so they can block two things, and they can soul guide me, and then 
I guess I should attack first and see what I draw. But I don't think they can ever win if they sack all of their lands. Alright, yeah, they conceded. Nice, we are 1-0. Clearly, so many of my changes mattered. Okay, I'm not sure any of them actually mattered. Oh, oh, we'll start a prediction for the next match, actually, if you want to gamble channel points. Alright, feel free to bet some channel points, and uh, here's the deck for everyone who's just joining. If you're new here, hit that follow button, that's free to do to support the stream. If you want, really want to support the stream and you have a Twitch Prime sub, consider using it here. And uh, thanks for being here. Yeah, it probably didn't help that they therapied Ur Uro, but Uro is like literally the most Cabal therapy resistant card possible. So, I don't know, like, I don't really know what they were hoping to accomplish, you know? Still waiting for another opponent. Get your bets in. Yeah, they mulligan like three times with ball therapy. What changes did I make? Uh, I just said the mana base, so play Savannah. So that means all of your fetches are strands and rainforest now. I kept the Mystic Sanctuary, I'm not sure, because there is a Terminus. Uh, I cut the second Foundry for a second Mox Diamond, and I changed the sideboard quite a bit. So there's a lot to take in, but I think the core idea that I've ever had was really good and kind of a unique way to attack the format. Now, I'm not sure if the deck's actually good, but, you know... That's why we're trying things, right? Got another match. Playing against a 3 1. Um, probably like reluctant keep. Obviously, an exploration would make this hand great. But I'm not going to mull in this hand. Not bad either. I guess I will draw the mocks and see what happens next turn. Um, I guess I could play Mox in a daze. It doesn't really affect me that much. Cool. Looks like a bant mirror. Oh, I see. I'm gonna brainstorm looking for days or plow. Okay, well that works. Please. Um Yeah, it looks like Bant stifle knot with Uro, probably as well, but I was looking for a daze, but I found a plow instead, so. So if I don't play a land first, they could double daze me. So if I. Hmm. I 
Oh, that's not good. Maybe I should have fetched. Feels like wasting them was correct, though. Oh, I know my top card, unfortunately, so I'm actually dead. Kinda yeah, sucks. Alright. Could have just, like... I guess I should have fetch instead of wasting. I don't know. Could have done things different. I'm kind of annoyed at myself, I suppose. Got Funk, uh, something like that. Alright, Claw looks good. Buster's good for Stifle bullshit. Um, I don't really like Terminus for Stifle. I think the Foundry is probably good. Oh uh, no, just, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just run it blind. Don't bother. Yeah, I don't really love this component either, but, you know. Maybe I want the Terminus. But Terminus is so bad versus Stifle. It's also not great, I think. Alright, gonna sideboard like that. Uh, this is a matchup where I wish I had, like, Supreme Verdict or Engineered Explosives, probably, but... Actually, Explosive sucks for Stifle, too, so... They play four Urza Saga, this is surely. I mean, I didn't side out my Wasteland, so... That was really frustrating. I have so many ways to kill Dreadnought in my deck that, like, I feel like that shouldn't happen. But, obviously, it can happen. Uh, the land's good. I should... I probably just want to draw all of these, honestly. Alright. I'm gonna waste that in pending. I don't really think carpet's that insane anymore personally, but I guess carpet's insane exactly versus blue red. I'm playing around days by doing this first. I think carpet aged a little bit not great, to be quite fair. Carpet's just a bad monkey. Um, I don't think it's that simple, but... You know. We're gonna just burn our cantrips because I have Ur on my deck. Dang it, what? I'm gonna waste them upkeep. If they stifle, I'll probably fluster. Alright, they didn't stifle. Don't need the fob anymore. Actually, I probably shouldn't have even brainstormed there, to be quite fair. 
That was probably a spew. I do, yeah, that basic land, that basic lands is nice. I agree. Anyways, I fetched because of Stifle, to be quite fair. Alright. Not bad. They might pending my thing, but that's fine. Whatever. I kind of wonder if Mystical Dispute should be in my sideboard as a Power Blast proxy, but it is worse than Power Blast for sure. So, I don't know. Probably not is the answer. they're fetching basics. Interesting. I guess it's hard to fetch basics if you have Uro in your deck. Okay. It's time for the Foundry to go to town. Oh. Is that good? If so, why, chat? Wish I had a blue fetch left, but you know, it's hard to be greedy. No, it's not, because I want to, like, counter, um... Well, Murktide comes to mind, first off. Um... I care about that? I'm just gonna dredge and cast it next turn. Like, I'm saving this for something more dangerous, I'm not sure what. Okay. Two mana cycle, all right, got it. I think I might just Sanctuary a Cantrip. They're looking for a land, I think, is the reason. I think that does make sense. I'm just gonna fetch for Savannah main phase. I'm just playing around Stifle, to be fair. Yeah, they were looking for a land into Dreadnought. I think that makes the most sense. Like, that is a logical play if you have Dreadnought in your hand. You know? Maybe they thought they couldn't wait? Uh, does Dredging Loam do much? Not really. I would rather just take one draw. This is better. So... Oh, we don't even have to cast it yet. Actually, you know what? It just sets itself up, which is kind of sick. Like, I can go cancel, cancel. Oh, that was not great. They have multiple dress downs? Yeah, it would make sense too. Wait. 
Two dress down? Okay, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, I should have actually left the blue source up, but whatevs. Wait, did I side out the sanctuary? Okay, I guess I sided out the sanctuary, so what I was even referring to does not work, because I do not have the mana capable of doing that. But we will kill them with our servos. And Constructs soon. It's just basically a zoo of artifacts, right? Alright. On to game three. change anything. I want Soul Guide versus them. Maybe. Probably want the Sanctuary, honestly. Maybe Diamond. Maybe the Fob is not worth it. Plan 3 for Back to Basics? I don't think that's likely because I think they're playing Uro and uh, Urza Saga probably. But yeah, I guess it's possible, I suppose. Right, I'll do this. And this music is a banger as well. We need the soul guide. I think it's good. Um, this hand's good if I draw a fetch, so I'm gonna keep. Yo, thanks for everyone following. Maybe we'll get to 6,200 followers soon. This music is a banger, though. I'm gonna play Foundry Off Wasteland. They waste my waste, that's fine. They chose to shuffle, so... Alright. Okay. I guess now I should play it. Like... They might waste me, that's fine. They are invulnerable to Wasteland. Will not deny them that. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Maybe I should have had Fob in my deck. Manifest means make a 2-2, so I shouldn't attack. 
So they can manifest a Dreadnought and like unmorph it for one mana essentially. Which is kind of cute. I think it also works with Uro, to be fair. Just kind of lame, but you know, whatever. Uh, I should have made my second one, actually, but whatever. Uh, being right sometimes sucks. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna chomp. I think my life is probably gonna matter this game. You mean you haven't played it yet? Deck, give me a white source, please. White source! Fuck. I mean, I chose to keep this hand. I'm not gonna complain about it. There was a, this was the risk. I think it, the math works out that you're probably favored to have a good draw, but obviously it can go south like this. Good beats, essentially, like, you know, you can always mulligan. You are allowed to do that, you know. PG8's getting paid out on the no bet. Alright, I think I'm actually mandated to dredge looking for a white source. Alright, cool. We found some white sources. I play lose. Want to stay full? Okay, I hope you don't. I have to just fire. Obviously, if they have fours, it sucks, but whatever. Let's just side out Terminus. Maybe I shouldn't have. I don't know. Terminus is so bad for Stifle, though. Like. It's kind of insane how bad it is versus Terminus, or versus Stifle, rather. Oh, I should have fetched Savannah as well. Yeah, I just gave them a mana for free. Probably a mistake. Uh, next turn, I'm not dredging because I'd rather just find anything that like, speeds me up. And just drawing more lands would not ever speed me up, so. Alright. Yeah. One of them's Dreadnought, I'm dead. But I guess any of them are Dreadnought. Grab my knife as I prepare for this 
Oh, I wish I had a exploration out. You're surprised that we're alive here? Well, their deck is... Well, I'm probably going to lose to the Scroll Thief, to be fair, but... So, I can... Maybe I should just pending one of the manifests and then follow another manifest. Actually, what happens if I just... can't play the side of the turn, unfortunately. I would love to, but I don't think it's allowed. I think it's pretty clear none of these are like, yeah, they're like, they're all like actually plants because like that's what Manifest does. No, I think I just have to let them have the library, unfortunately. I don't think I have time depending the library, because I think I die to the creatures if I do that. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably get outcarded, but... The problem with pending the library is the scroll is just killing me. Right? Like, I think my best bet is to try to kill every single creature and then, like, stabilize with Saga. But obviously, it's not easy, especially since I don't have an exploration or an Uro. Okay. That's good, actually. They probably have a bunch of plows in hand. It really doesn't make sense for them not to. Okay, I guess they don't. Can make a servo to block and hope that they still don't have a lethal thing, obviously. I don't think they do. Obviously they could, but... I'm just gonna pretend like they don't, because it's so hard to win if they do. I kinda think they have probably only one to two Dreadnoughts in their deck for Saga. You get to play the shell game here? Shell game's not that fun. But I guess we do get to play the shell game, huh? I don't think I played this well. Well, I don't think... I'm thinking about it more. Maybe I should have just... Oh shit, that's pretty bad.
So this is basically every Bant Mage's uh, fallback, which is hope that this is good enough. Yes, Planar Cleansing would be good here. I agree with you. So basically I'm hoping that they haven't figured out that if they just activate getting an attack with everything, I'm dead. Now if they figure that out, I'm obviously dead, but you know, what else am I gonna do? Maybe they play around submerge or something obscure, you know? Just don't click on that. Don't click on that. That do not click on that one. What's going up too is it's Banta uh, Squirrel Fate Stifle or not. But can Wasteland waste itself? Alright, they figured it out. Good. I don't know. This was like a really hard game to win, to be fair. Alright, I think I should have mulliganed in retrospect, but you know. I did not win this match. Those of you who were not believers were paid off. Curse you all. Curse you all. Weird deck. Cracked pet. All right, a new prediction up for the next match. Um, thanks for being here, everyone. If you want to support the stream, hit that follow button. That's free to do. If you really want to support this stream, Check out exclamation point coaching. I offer coaching. Um, I assume some people will want to play Legacy Eternal Weekend. I'm willing to go over decks, try to teach you a deck, you know, just talk things through for a few hours. You know, everything you could imagine that you would want to know about a deck, I could try to do for you. If you really want to support a stream in a different way and you have a Twitch Prime sub, please use it here or, or somewhere else on someone else, uh, you know, just support some content creator. Anyways, I'll be right back using the restroom real quick and getting some more water.
Alright. I'm back. Match three. Uh, get your predictions in. We got a match. <laughs> oh my god, this is the most classic fan tan. Um... Fucking Mystic Sanctuary. This is why I hate Mystic Sanctuary so much. Alright. For Locked and Keep is my vote. I kind of hope it's not Doomsday. My hand's not very good for Doomsday. My hand's, like, quite bad for Doomsday, actually, but, you know, that's how it is, right? Still have to sneak that in, I think. God, I hate Sanctuary so much. I think Sanctuary is one of those cards, if I could guarantee it lived in my deck, would be so insane. But it's so hard to guarantee that. Like, Sanctuary, I think, is a card if you... Yeah, if you if you just guaranteed it was in your deck, it would be so much better than it, it, than it often is, you know? Shuffle, huh? Alright. Maybe I can, like, trick them into thinking I'm Bant Control. Progenitus Experience? Yeah, something like that. It's very much like that. I've I've had Progenitus be in my hand more than zero, you know? I think we're gonna shuffle the plows away. It's like pretty clear that they think they're not good. Well, now that the sanctuaries are in play, I might as well get the Savannah. No. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have played my land first. Just maybe. Okay. I'll keep one of the wastes and then shuffle again, and then look for look for exploration, I guess, so I can waste them. Might be dead, but that's also fine. You know, we don't worry about that stuff. How much? I don't think it gets that much because, like, I think a lot of the combo decks and Legacy are designed to beat one or two fouls, really. I think wasting them is better than not to be fair. Maybe they daze? Looks like they're dazing, actually. Yeah, that's true. 
Anyways, I'm not going to put the Saga in play because I don't actually want them to go for it yet. If I put Saga in play, they might just, like, try to do things, you know? I would rather they did nothing. Wait, what? Oh, is this actually Uro Mirror disguise? This is an Uro Mirror, I'm fine with that. Although, I mean, I guess it could be Doomsday Uro. Some nonsense. Um, okay. They spell pierce, then they force. It's like very weird and kind of imprecise. There's some deck that can never win if I wasteland them a bunch of times, so I'm gonna just pursue that plan. I mean, I'm kind of playing whatever I want to. Like, I don't really fault them, but also their deck looks like it can never win if this happens, right? I don't know. Drawing and exploration would be better. Uh, I'll, play, I'll play around days for free. I think my opponent's conceding to Uro. Yep, we Uroed them real good, chat. Classic Uroing right there. So this is a matchup where I would definitely want Pyroblast, but it opens fine. I think I'm gonna cut Foundry. I don't I think it's just like funky and slow and not very good. Um Soul Breacher is fine. I think Soul Guide is probably fine. And I'll cut one mox again. I also want days actually versus them. This Uro card. Uh, you're describing life from the loam, right? Because you literally described life from the loam right there. Uro's basically tendrils. Is it? Is it basically tendrils? Why not both? I guess that's fair. Uh, I think I might cut one removal spell. Probably the Terminus, honestly. It's so, like... Maybe I'm gonna hate cutting the Terminus, but I don't know. It's like... It's so awkward. He has days and two cantrips. That card too. It's great. Spells in one turn, then Uro, are they dead? Is it like Baleful Strix? Or, I barely care.
heat. Him has aged really far away. I suggest you... I suggest if you want to save yourself some trouble, that you don't register him to Torok anymore. I didn't even bother dazing him, like, why the fuck do I care? Like, it doesn't do anything. I agree it's sad, but also him is, like, kind of heinous gameplay. You know. It sounds like they should have put him in... No, absolutely not. Do I care about this? Um... Probably not. I can probably find a plow or a pending. I'm not dredging loam because I need to find removal for that. I guess that's sort of worked. They daze me, I'm fine with that. I can daze back. Forget my own. No, there are two export, two explorations. So forget your brain farm. So next turn, I'm just kind of pending that. I just need to stabilize the board, then eventually Uro will kill them. Like. You know, not much else actually matters. Actually, maybe I'll just pending that. I think I should just pending that instead. Because I get some bunch of birds. Well, I guess I'm punished by not putting pending in my hand now. This sucks. Nice. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Saga's supposed to alleviate that to some degree, but, yeah, it's possible that you need another angle. If I die to Tarmogoyf, I'm gonna be really upset, because, like, my deck is actually really good versus Tarmogoyf. Like, I have so many removal spells. Deck, please stop doing this. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, Dredging Loam doesn't do anything here. Really? Why is this happening? Is that even good? Doesn't seem good.
I really hope I don't die to this with four pendings for plows in my deck, but depends on what level they're on. Okay, cool. I fight a little bit more, I guess. I need my soul guide back. Clearly. Or I need to dredge into wasteland. That did not happen. I'm mostly dead. Bounce is a really good card, you know. So I'm siding in Fav and like one endurance. I probably have to leave in one boundary. You know, I don't really like it. As I really don't like boundary as much as other people. I think. But well, maybe this deck is not allowed to side it out. Like, I keep flooding out and I have nothing to do. Feels like I'm dead though. Like, I don't know. I've drawn a lot of lands, but maybe that's just an issue with the deck, generally speaking. Okay, I guess you got me. I think my deck is really good versus theirs if this doesn't resolve. Or if, like, I don't know. I think I drew really badly. Was there a way to avoid this? I mean, I guess it, I could have put the pending in my hand, but I generally don't because of discard. Like, if, if I put Pending in my hand, they discard spelled me, they would have worked out much worse. So that's why I didn't do that. That's what I'm thinking about mostly. That's like the major thing I could have done differently, I think. Maybe I don't need so much removal. Although, like, obviously I died to Uro, but... Hmm. Alright. 
right. Here we go. Maybe something good will happen. I don't know what exactly. Oh, I can't believe I lost that way, chat. Why did that happen? All right, game three though. It's fine. Can't wait for the meme from the Torok plus surgical plan to like destroy me random way. Doing that when I keep what's ponder on top is like Okay, I guess you're trying to get me. Do you have a third wasteland? Absolutely fine. I'm not actually afraid of it. This surgical is marked for Uro. Azax. I'm pretty sure you know that you're just beaming, right? days. Right, Yo, what's up, basic swamps? Probably blue green is best to go after. Loam would obviously be incredible. But I can search up Soul Guide anyways, so. Days. I can just wait a turn. It's fine. Sure. I mean, I've already gotten the all the value I need out of this. I've gotten two constructs and a soul guide out of my saga, so search going in is absolutely fine. You're supposed to, like, really construct with the saga activation on the stack um they have one card all right i'm gonna ponder now actually because now if i find a waste 
That's still good enough, I think. Is it good to trade two spells for half a land? No. Not really. Why would it? opponent's mega dead now. I'm just gonna, like, waste them every turn until the contract kills them. Yeah, we lost, uh... What did I lose round 2-2? Two, two? I don't even remember anymore. Oh. Was it Bant Stifle Knot with Saga? Yeah, it was Bant Stifle Knot with Saga. That's what happened. Oh! Shoot. I didn't mean to click that one. Ah, that's kind of bad, actually. I hope it doesn't cost me. This deck is so sick. Um, there's some structural vulnerabilities that I'll discuss at the end. I don't think you can actually beat an opponent that draws two surgical extractions if they use it them correctly. Well, they also have to kill two constructs, I guess, but... There's some, like, weird vulnerabilities that I think are pretty obvious once you play, like, a game or two. I'm gonna cack their graveyard to shut off a future arrow. Just in case. Like, obviously I could, like, loam waste them out, but I'm just trying to imagine what happens if I don't get in that that plan. Okay, do I have the boundary? No, I don't. So I have to be maybe careful, but Hunter Tundra Crop Love. Only two cantrip left, ironic. I wish I hadn't spewed that Sanctuary Land drop. I think that actually matters as well. they touch. Okay, I'm no longer scared of surgical. I do not believe they have it in their hand anymore. Alright, ended up winning that match. Run a prediction for the next match. Oh, do they type stuff? Oh, I feel bad. Someone, if they know that person, tell them GG, I guess. I had the chat closed. 
I usually play with it closed. Alright. Um, get your predictions in for match number four. Thanks for being here on this Monday. We are playing some Legacy Bant Bloom lands. So far, I think maybe you need a better um, plan post board versus people trying to like hate out your graveyard. Because like, Actual lands can stage a stage a saga and then turn it into a basic. This deck can't, so you actually get into situations where you might not actually have enough win cons. Like, I think that actually might be a serious issue if your opponent draws like two or three surgical extractions. That might sound stupid, I don't know. Does that sound stupid to anyone? Like, I feel like that could actually happen. Am I being crazy? Someone want to fact check me on that? nothing good game three well so funny thing is i brainstormed in game two to hide a prismatic ending on top because i wanted to protect it from him you surgical me and then i didn't draw a removal spell for your karma glaive so i guess like a similar thing happened right there Maybe a Jace for a more uh, graveyard resilient one con. Yeah, that could happen. Punchpin esque? A little bit, I suppose. I mean, if you played one stage and one depth, that might solve a lot of problems, honestly, but there are no crop rotations or anything, so it's kind of weird to do that, I suppose. Match four coming. Uh, Field of the Dead, I thought about it. I don't know why I didn't play it. You could play one, but secretly Field of the Dead needs Loam going to fuel it. Um, the con. Yeah, I think this might be a little bit too underpowered, but you know, there's no harm in trying it out for a league, right? Of the bugbears, it's probably Moon Stompy. Yeah, I mean, I just want to try it for science. I don't really have any important legacy tournaments soon, so it's like whatevs, right? I don't think Reclaimer would help the problems this deck has, if I had to guess. I can't really beat Blood Moon anyways. Oh shoot, I was supposed to get Savannah. I confused myself into not getting Savannah. I don't think Reclaimer would help, honestly. I think I said that already. It doesn't really do enough, I think. Oh, 
things. I'm gonna be dead before that. Oh, so I have Miracle Terminus, I guess. So this is a situation where Terminus would be good. Any terminus checks? Alright, so I have to miracle terminus in their turn. Nothing else works. This is a 1 in 49 or chat. trashes decks like these nowadays like it's kind of funny how insane blue red is versus decks now it's kind of funny to think about but you know they stacked the triggers late right last turn and they didn't stack directly this turn never lucky never lucky chat I'm never lucky. Containment Priest is good for his Firefox squad, actually, which is kind of funny. Um... Okay, what do I not really care for? Loams are honestly not very good in this matchup. So I think I'm just not going to play on that after this. Oh, by the way, someone who was asking about field, I don't even think there's enough unique lands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess there are technically, but field's really slow and actually does require a loam to be going. So it's not actually graveyard agnostic, if that makes sense. This is really hard to get eight lands in play unless you're drawing like lands with the loam as it is. It's why I don't really like Field of the Dead very much in this in this format. Of course that's just my personal opinion. Obviously I could be wrong. I'm getting an island, of course. I wish I had more than one basic in this matchup, of course, as well, but it's possible that there are just too many dual lands in this deck as well. I was thinking about that, you know, potentially. Titanium. 
Kinda just hoping that they don't have another full land plus another good. If they have another moon, it's gonna be kind of problematic. I guess I can always mox pitch something to it. And then uh cast ending for three. Or X equals two. So I guess it's not the end of the world. Sure. Don't think I care about that. I think I might just kill their mox. Okay, I think I'm gonna just kill their mocks and play my saga. Twitch chat only wants one thing and it's the deck list. Okay, bad. I cannot care about whatsoever. <laughs> So I can make construct, construct, and search up. Um, I didn't sign in second boundary. I probably should have. I'm joking, but he has like, you know, he has like, it kind of does feel like people only come here for one thing, you know. I'm gonna thin my deck of a Mox Diamond. Because I don't want to draw it. My hand's really bad now. But that's okay. It's kind of hard for them to win from here, I think. I think I need to actually have, like, a few loams in, actually, based on how the deck is constructed. Come here for the Marvelous... Darkless? Uh, I've played a lot of Modern lately. Borns... Borns... Stanker? I don't know how to pronounce that. Attack all, and they have to block a construct. Yo, hey, what's up, Brussels sprouts? You, you may may have misspelled Jarvis. Huh? Nice Trinisphere and Jowls you got over there. It'd be a shame if you were just dying to constructs. Alright, game three versus Moon Stompy. I think I'm gonna re-engineer my deck slightly on the draw because like just the probability of turn one chalice is much higher. So I think I'm gonna try to cut some one drops that are not great. Um Actually the second one of these should be in my deck for sure though. I think I might just shave on ponders on the draw. Which is kind of crazy to think about, but there's a method to the madness.
Are you astonished, Inferno One? I'm not astonished. Why are you astonished? Uh, Uro's kind of hard to cast, actually. I'm gonna cut one. I'm also cutting three bonders, so cutting one Uro makes sense. Just like the looms are less bad versus Chalice. But I need a little, I also need a few more green cards for the fob as well, so cutting blue cards for green cards also makes sense. Um a lot actually, but it's kind of hard to explain. It's not like apples and oranges. The deck is this version is a lot more consistent, I think. Like putting cantrips in your deck makes your deck more consistent. But I think what happens is it's hard to win like like, this deck versus straight lands, I don't think it you could really win. It would be, like, basically impossible. So, I don't know if that's a good way of putting it. Bottom and up draw land. Bob is, like, insane in the matchup, so that's what I'm keeping, but obviously this is an ugly hand. I was kind of hoping it was a, it was a Blood Moon, honestly. Alright, come on chat, blue source off the top. Come on, blue source off the top. Did we have in Terminus? It did, right? I feel like this might be a Terminus game again. It still might not be too late if I draw a fetch this turn. That's too late, I think. Uh, I take seven next turn, going to six. Oh no, I still could have drawn Terminus. What, why did I concede? Ah, I'm just annoyed, I guess. It's really hard for this deck to win from these positions, I think. Alright, well... <laughs> God damn. Oh, that was disappointing. Science is not working. Or I guess... Javier is a better player than I am, which is not surprising. The, I think this might be a ham si sandwich sort of situation going on here. Or Javier is much better than I am, which is not surprising. That was really sad. Prediction up for the last match of the night, though. Like, I don't know. I think I played... Ugh. I think I could have played that better as well. Opposite of Terminus, yeah. I think I told people about my Unreal Hatred for um, Mystic Sanctuary, right? I hate that card so much. It's like... I think it's really just overrated and, like, results in really horrendous mana bases. I don't know if that's crazy or whatever.
Yo, Coderific, welcome back. Thank you for the tier one sub. Let me know if I should open a chest for you. I'm waiting the prediction ride before I start another match. Well, we'll start the match. Go to Riftic, let me know if I should open a chest for you. Oh, can we get another easy matchup? Or do I have to struggle again? Red Prison, I think, for this configuration is not great. Like, honestly, I think Normal Lands is actually good versus Red Prison because of the post-board games where, like, if you play Depths and you force a Vigor or Punching Fire, they're... Magus or Blood Moon, you just get a Merit Leech for free. It makes it so easy, in my opinion. I mean, obviously it's not just like, that's not the end-all be-all, but it, I think it makes it pretty easy. I was playing Burn? This person playing Burn? Burn with Disrupt? Um, I'm looking for Uro. But the sand's fine. It's like not the most insane versus burn, but. Also, not a guarantee they're actually burned, you know? That's a shuffle, actually. I don't think... Like, if I draw this, I'm probably just gonna lose. I don't think they're burn if they're doing this. Or it'd be a very strange burn hand, I guess. That's how I would put it. I might just brainstorm the second one of these away, honestly. I don't think playing the second one does much. If I already have Loam going, I'm like probably in decent shape as it is, so there's not a lot of point, I think. I'm gonna put Ponder on top of my deck, actually, because I don't have any gas. up well hope you're having a good one i'm attempting to figure out if javier is better than magic than i am and the answer is obviously yes but no to ragavan X-Whale imply that there's a Y-Whale somewhere? I'll let X-Whale answer that. Answer that however you choose, X-Whale. Or maybe there's a Z-Whale somewhere as well. He chose not to couple? Alright.
not gonna play another land out. I guess if I draw another brainstorm. I guess I should play around Stifle. I could have maybe waited on the brainstorm, but it felt like just finding a loam would be so good that if I found the loam, I could just like waste my opponent out pretty easily. So, as usual, the best brawl is probably Uro. Yeah, I think I should have just waited a turn on that Brainstorm L-Dub, is the reality of it. I think casting that turn was not great. In retrospect. Like, I think just waiting one turn probably leads to a better outcome. Yeah. Still have a bad card to put on top for Brainstorm. It's this exploration. I wonder if they're gonna bolt me. Uh, not. Sucks. Yeah, I'm just gonna lose to like, you know, blue red stuff because like this deck is probably worse for blue red than normal lands is. Alright, down here. I don't think like adding the blue stuff improves you in this matchup, is what I'm saying. I mean, you become more consistent, but it's not really about that, you know? Like, stage depths and punching fire are super good in this matchup. Blue red stuff winning? Well, I mean, I think we've identified problems with this deck that aren't readily apparent by looking at it, right? Yo, what's up, Weinberg? Welcome back. Jarvis clap, Jarvis clap. Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Let me know if I should open a chest for you. Uh, because Javier won with it, Basic Swamped. I was trying it because Javier did well with it last weekend. Yeah, I'm not really a fan, but I also was just going to try it for science and determine what it does better and worse, if that makes sense. I mean, it kind of feels like I just flood out every game and lose, but I don't know. It's kind of funny. But I guess that's just kind of how it is, right? <laughs> I guess the problem is if you don't really have anything to camp can trip into, then like, what is your deck even doing, right? Uh, 
Alright, well, if this, if this doesn't win, I'm just retiring the deck. It's hard to play a three-color deck with maze and shit, though, like, is the other problem, to be quite fair. We take that. Yeah, Javier can win with a hand sandwich. That's basically what's going on, I think. You know, which is fine. That's, that's just how it is. I try to waste my saga and I'm okay with that actually. Okay. I think I actually want to draw the next card as well, which is kind of funny. I'll see if they have Ragavan on their turn. Like, there's not a real reason to kill this now, I think. I mean, obviously they could put an instant or sorcerer in the stack. They didn't attack? What does that mean? Probably means something. Endurance? Oh, sure. That makes sense. Portion such a troll. Alright. I'm definitely getting it with uh, Fluster. This is a good spot to use my Fluster as well. Yeah, I don't think they have Dazer Force either, which means I'm... Well, it... Drawing a land would make it easier, but, you know, it would be nice to just play that and know I'm safe. Oh. Maybe that's just reckless. Murktide. All right, I think I'm gonna wait exactly one turn because I think I can afford to play around days, which is kind of like an issue, but you know, what's up, run for? Fix the mana base a little bit because I think you want to play Savannah. I am playing the second Mox or playing two Mox Diamond, and the sideboard is very different. I have a bunch of hate bears instead of horses because I don't think horses are great in a deck like this, generally speaking. Looks like a Merc died. Alright, I'm gonna Hydro Blast the Ragavan and play Uro. I guess I'm in the same 
Fusion Plasma right now. He did not have Daves. It's kind of hard for them to have Daves there, as someone pointed out, but obviously they could have Fire Blast. Force is not great here for them. They melt a force. It looks like Ura might just uh, put them in the ground, though. We'll see, though. That strand, I think, was from Iteration. I kept one days. That like I think having one is good, but I don't think having the second is great. And I could be wrong, like, I don't know. Uh do they have a bolt, I guess. Uh do they have a second merc guide? If they have a second merc guide, why didn't they attack? This is Slightly problematic. Wait, where's my sanctuary? Did I cite it out? Oh my god. Okay, I'm not allowed to cite out Sanctuary, guys. Fuck. Yeah, I think I just have to hope to find a plow. God. I thought... This is a disaster, actually. I mean, I could have not plowed the Ragavan, but it felt wrong. The fact of the matter is, since I boarded out the Sanctuary, I don't think I can win. Like, if, if I had gotten to fetch for Sanctuary and put plow on top there, I think that would have been a big enough swing. But since I boarded poorly, I lost, I think, instead. It's also possible I shouldn't plow the Ragavan, I guess, as well, but, you know, sucks to suck. Super high, yeah, that could be the case as well. Like, I don't think I played this great. Now my deck, I'm literally dead, except for the Terminus. I'll go to the Boo Blast. Um, they're fine. Obviously, they're not my favorite, but... Oh, I don't have the Terminus either. Okay, I think I ruined my deck in this matchup, actually. So I'm not going to blame the deck, but I also think it's kind of hard to win if your deck requires you to play perfectly all the time. No, I don't think I played it that well, actually. I think I played really not great. But, you know. It's kind of... Okay. Let me unpack it after I pay out the, pay out the prediction. But, basically, all my decisions ended up causing me to lose. So, there's a temptation... Alright, I've noticed, noticed this over the years. There's a temptation for bad players to always blame... 
bad luck, and there's a temptation for good players to always blame themselves. But when in reality, the truth is in between. Um, deck building and play score are inversely proportional. I think that's just not a logical conclusion, but that's okay. And yeah, I think decks being able to bail you out is actually a strength of a deck, not a weakness. I think having to play perfectly all the time is a huge bug for a deck. Like, that's that's the opposite of what you want from a magic deck, I think. You know? Because if you have to do everything perfectly all the time to get, like, your 70% win rate, that means, like, if you're on an off day, you're just going to lose more because, like, your deck is forcing you into a situation where, like, you can't mess up. And I think that's just, like, not a good way to win a tournament or do well in a tournament, you know? So, that's my thought on this deck, and this deck sort of feels like that. It feels like I'm trying too hard for a marginal thing that is obviously strong, but I think I can do better, essentially. So, that that's my verdict. Why? Uh, that was not intended. That was not intended at you, but I guess if you can apply it so you don't rage Q at 3, then it'll be good for your sanity as well? Question mark? But yeah, that's basically how I feel about what happened right there. Monka S. It really was not intended for you, Eli, but, um, you know, that's how it is, I suppose. Anyways, um, thanks for everyone being here. Teamer. Yeah, the problem is three color land decks have bad mana bases because of stage, depths, wasteland, port. That's why I think it's hard to justify adding blast zone, stage, maze to this deck because you have Uro and Plow. And like blue cantrip, so like the mana is really wonky. Like, I think you can justify Saga on Wasteland, but I don't think you can go further than that, which is the issue. And that sort of felt like it was happening when I played these games as well. I don't even know if my sideboard cards are better than just playing Six Forces, frankly, because of how the mana requirements work out. So, final verdict is, I think, maybe I should just admit that Javier is so much better that... He can do things, and the deck list was not known last weekend as well. So the combination of those two things probably did a lot for the deck that I cannot reproduce because I'm not him. And you know, that's that's just how it is. Which is 5-0 with uh, GR Alliance. I might actually do that on Wednesday or Thursday, Basic Swamps, but I'm probably not going to do it tonight because it's already... Uh, it's already going a little bit late. So, um, let's see. I think I'm going to... Black Green lands with Spreading Algae. That doesn't sound very good. Yeah, Javier top forward the challenge yesterday with this. A slightly different version of it. That's why I wanted to try it, you know? <laughs> 